section of my firm, Bobby Tax Services. My firm specializes in tax preparation, tax planning, and tax representation services for individuals and businesses. And so today's topic is really um, how to make the most out of your tax refund. It's um, you know, in order to avoid the whole issue of spending impulse, you, get, you receive money that ultimately you don't believe or you did not believe was there and so when you receive it you just spend it automatically so really teaching you some of the tips and, tr and tricks of how to avoid that and how to really make the most out of that tax refund um, and then leading into savings investing and then ultimately paying off um, high interest high interest debt such as credit cards but before we move into the topic I would like to kick it off with a market week um, this this report is as of March 31st, 2017, so as of last Friday. And so last week, um, stocks actually picked back up um, before the previous week. They took a, a small hit, very small hit, but they rebounded last week. Um, and so ultimately, each, each of the big indexes in the U.S. posted gains. The small cap, Russell 2000, which was the strongest performing index last year, hit a rough patch over the past several weeks. But the index gained over 2.3% um, 2 last week, pushing it to 2.12% um, year to date. And then the tech heavy NASDAQ actually climbed about 1.4% after falling 1.2% the prior week. And then the Dow, um, the Dow Jones recouped some of its losses from the previous week after gaining a little over 0.3%. And so really, all the, of all the indexes, NASDAQ is leading the way. Tech-heavy NASDAQ, uh, meaning tech stocks have been doing pretty well. Technology stocks have been doing pretty well so far this year. Um, the Facebook, um, the Amazons, the, the Google, the Apple, all those stocks really, they've been doing um, pretty well. And then, so they've gained almost 10% so far this year. So if you put your money into a NASDAQ index, you should be tracking this 10% um, positive gains that, that have been coming through. And then last month, they gained about 1.5%. So the price of crude oil also rose last week. Crude, um, oil was taking a hit the past um, over the past several weeks. But last week, it rose. Um, from 48.14 a barrel to actually 50.85 a barrel. So oil is doing pretty, it rebounded basically, it bounced back. Um, and then the price of gold continues to climb from 12.46.40 per, um, per ounce versus, versus 12.50.60 um, that it's currently at. So the market um, did pretty good. You know, GDP growth, we're now growing at 2.1% GDP versus 1.9% that was predicted. And so we're doing pretty good so far this year. Um, this is probably one of the best years that I've seen, um, at least since I've been tracking the stock market and, and just tracking the market in general. But I mean, NASDAQ is up almost 10% already. And that's, that's pretty good solid gains. That's on track to be up 40% um, for the year. So since, since we're up 10%, for the first quarter of the year. Um, it's, it is projected, technically is projected to go up 40%. So tech stocks are expected to go up 40% um, this year in total. I mean, if you think about it too, you have a lot of advancement in technology coming out. Um, you have the aut autonomous vehicles. Um, you have augmented reality. You have basically there's just a lot of technology heavy stuff, a lot of Almost everything we do nowadays is based off technology. Look at Uber, um, look at look at all these companies. All they do is technology. Everything we do is technology. And so that's that's a big reason why NASDAQ is up. Um, it's a tech heavy index. And so that's up um, just about 10% so far this year. So we're, we're still doing pretty good. No need to panic, no need to worry about much. Um, the year has kicked off great. And hopefully it continues, especially for us investors who have um, put our money into the market. And now in leading into the topic of how to make the most out of your tax refund. And so on this radio, I've been talking a lot about taxes. 
one, how to save, how to basically avoid it. Um, basically the, the concept of avoiding getting a tax refund because a tax refund is nothing more than an interest-free loan um, to the government. And so now we'll be talking about the last phase of, is of you actually getting that tax refund. What do you actually do with the tax refund? Let's say you actually did, you actually did get it. What should you actually do? And so although a tax refund is essentially your own money, there are many ways to maximize its utility. So always remember that not receiving a tax refund is the most ideal scenario because it means that your money worked throughout the year. I'm assuming that you've been taking advantage of all the tax loopholes out there. But essentially the best case scenario is to not receive a tax refund at all. Um, that way, that means your money was growing. That means your money was compounding throughout the year. Instead of the IRS handing you a big check at the end of the year, you were the one in control of that money. Hopefully you invested it. You paid down high interest rate credit cards. You did something that maximized the utility of this money. But let's say this is that. Um, let's say the beginning of next year, you receive this tax refund. What do you actually do with it? And so what most people do is they receive this money and they they do what's known as spending impulse. You know, they go out, they splurge the money on whatever it is, clothes, alcohol, jewelry, vacation, anything. I, there are some people that literally spent their entire tax refund on a vacation. Um, so ultimately it is your choice on what you want to do with the money, um, but understand that there is a future ahead of us. And so just spending the entire tax refund is probably not the most ideal scenario. There are other things that you could do and you probably should do with the tax refund. And so, so people go out and spend it. Um, ultimately what this does is it leaves you with nothing to save. It leaves you with nothing to invest, nothing. And so this is a bad way to kick off the year. <laughs> You know, you've received this large lump sum of money from the government. Most people's tax refunds are pretty large. Average of 70% of people receiving tax refunds that do um, receive tax or that do file their taxes. And here's, here's a scary thing is that the IRS actually has over a million, over a billion dollars actually in tax refunds laying around from 2013 um, from people not filing, not doing it correct just not claiming that money. There's a billion dollars right now of unclaimed money that's in the possession of the IRS um, just because people have procrastinated from 2013. And this number actually gets, it gets more and more. I remember the last time I checked, it was 700 million in 2012 that just went to waste. Um, so now we're at $1 billion from 2013. The statistic from 2014 is going to come out pretty soon. Um, whenever um, filing season is coming around next year, but ultimately there are there's money that is literally laying around. So that's that's one issue in itself, is that you work so hard for this money, and now you're just letting the government basically take possession of it, like your own money, literally. Nobody nobody worked for this money but you, and so a billion dollars right now is out there, just you know, just, just waiting to be um, claimed. And of course, the IRS can't do anything if this money is unclaimed. They would just keep it. But that's um, that, That's just one one of the little small, small things out there is that, for one, go out and claim the refund. If you're entitled to it, go out and claim it. And then once you get it, please don't just spend it. You know, it's like, that's, that's how people become financially distressed, is that living above your means. That's, that's a term that's always thrown out there. But ultimately what you want to do is you want to break up this refund into different chunks. Now, if you do want to spend it, you could, and I mean, you, sh you, you could or you should probably spend just, you know, a small portion of it. What you can even do is you can use half of it 
for fun activities, let's say a vacation or something like that. And then maybe use the other half, say, just save it or invest it. One easy trick is to split your refund within two different bank accounts. You split it within a, let's say a checking account, the refund, half of it goes into the checking account. This is your quote unquote splurge account. And then the other half is automatically deposited into a savings account or an investment account. And so the IRS allows you to split up which bank accounts your refund is going to go to. It can even go directly into an investment account. And so that is one trick is to, you know, remember before, before you even see the money, half of it is already gone into something good. And I don't know any man that has gone wrong by either saving or investing at least some of the money, at least into something safe. It doesn't even have to be a risky stock or anything like that. There are safe investments out there. Um, for one example is AT&T stock. I mean, this stock has been growing dividends for the past 42 years now. It's probably never going to cut dividends. Even through our recessions, this company has increased dividends. Some companies go bankrupt, some companies stop paying dividends. This company, they've actually increased dividends during recessions. And so that, that itself lets you know that it's a pretty good company. And I mean, look around, AT&T is everywhere. Um, just recently acquired Time Warner. Just, just little things like that. If you want a super, super, super safe investment, I would say AT&T stock is probably your best bet. Paying very nice dividends, very generous dividends. Um, it's one of my top holdings right now. I'm, I'm a big time AT&T investor. And so this company, they pay very generously. I mean, 5% dividends guaranteed each and every year. Some years it's been 6% um, and it's, it's actually going up each and every year. They've grown dividends 42, 43, 44 years. It's, it's been a long, a long time coming. And so just little things like that. Um, if you want, let's say you have a brokerage account and you want this money to go directly into the brokerage account, you could do that. Um, you would just need to fill out a, a very short form with the IRS, or you can let your tax preparer know that you want your refund to be split into different ways. Now the easiest, one of the easiest ways is probably putting the money into Let's say half of it into a savings account and then the other half is you know maybe a splurge account your checking account now the best case scenario is you use a hundred percent of it to either invest it to um, save it or to pay off high interest debt and I like I would like to make an emphasis on the words high interest and I'll talk about that more later um, but ultimately, the IRS allows you to split your refund amount. And so, if you're not a, if you're not going to spend it, if you're not like, you know, the majority of Americans who are overspending and spending their tax refund essentially, you can be in the three buckets: save it, invest it, pay off high interest debt. And there's a fourth bucket. Um, this is probably not as practical practicable as the other ones, but you can also donate it uh, maybe to your favorite charity or maybe to your favorite, um, you know, favorite local 501c3 nonprofit organization. And so one way is by saving the tax refund. And so what this will allow you to do is to beef up your emergency savings. And remember the rule of thumb is to always have three to six months of your necessary expenses emphasis on necessary expenses saved at all times and when I say necessary I mean things like rent phone food electricity um, so anything that if you didn't have you would basically die or you would be in financial distress or you would be living below your means or the fancy terms out there but necessities things that you know for a fact you need you need a place to live you need a way to get around town, um, whether it's be a, a, a car or transportation. Everybody needs that, basically. Um, you need food. You have to eat. You need something to drink. You need you need just, just essential day-to-day -day 
things that we need. Those are necessary expenses. And so three to six months, if you combine all of those expenses together, you should have three to six months at any given point in time of the year, you should have it saved. It doesn't have to be money in the bank. Um, this is one of the most confused concepts that three to six months does not have to be money sitting in a bank. It can be through other means. Um, maybe it is a very, very safe liquid um, liquid stock or something like that. It could be something that's something that is very easy to access. I would say if you can't access it within 24 hours, it's not easily accessible. And there are a lot of different accounts to put this money into that can make it easily accessible. If you want to be 100% safe, just put it in the bank, three months worth of savings in the bank. Um, that way, you know for a fact it's easy access accessible. You go to the bank, tell the teller, hey, I need my money, and you get your money, and you do whatever it is that it is um, you need to be. And so that's emergency. Remember, this is emergency fund, emphasis on emergency. This is not money that you're going on vacation with. No, this is pure emergencies, things that you do not expect to happen. And, and that's another thing. Some, some people that go out and pull out from the emergency fund to pay for a vacation. And now you're stuck with lack of emergency. The point of the emergency fund is for emergencies. You can have a vacation fund. That's different from this emergency fund. You can have a, a spending fund. This is, these are all different accounts. What I'm talking about is pure emergency. And remember, you could have this money direct depo directly deposited into this account without you even seeing it. And so before the money even hits your main account, your splurging account, you don't even see this money. It's, it, it's gone already. It's, it's gone into your savings account. Um, and it's it's going to be used for something better in the future, hopefully. And so, another thing is you can beef up your retirement savings. So one of the most most um, often misunderstood concepts is that people believe you have to have a job or you have to be with an employer or you have to save for retirement through an employer. You don't have to. You can have your own retirement account, no matter who you are. You can have your own individual retirement account or IRA. Anyone is entitled to this account. You just have to have earned income. Earned income being, um, let's say, wages. Maybe it's from your W-2. Maybe you're a self-employed individual. Um, may, just income coming from somewhere. You have to have income in order to have this IRA account. Um, but assuming you do, assuming you have earned income, you can actually have your own individual retirement account. You have a Roth IRA, traditional IRA. Even if you can't get one of these, you have non-deductible IRA. And then you, you, can, you can do a loophole known as the backdoor IRA. Um, but ultimately, you have options. You have options to save for retirement. What, what I used to do when I used to work at my company, when I was a full-time employee, I had three different retirement accounts. I had my 401k, um, which I was contributing to it every single, every paycheck. I was doing about 6% every, um, every month, so about 3% every paycheck. And then I also had a Roth IRA, as well as a traditional IRA. And so each and every month, I would contribute a certain portion let's say $500 into this um, Roth IRA account. You don't have to go 500, you can go 100, you can go 200, do something. Or you can wait until the end of the year or the beginning of next year and throw your tax refund directly into this Roth IRA or traditional IRA. Typically, if you're below six figures, you should go to Roth. If you're above six figures, you should probably go traditional. There's a whole debate on that concept, um, but Understand that a Roth IRA is not is not a bad option. And keep in mind, you would be disqualified. If you're above six figures, you would actually be disqualified from the traditional IRA. But you can just do a backdoor IRA. And if you want to learn more about that strategy, we can always talk about that.
another option is to invest the money. So if you're like me who hates money laying in the bank, um, not producing much utility, I would rather invest my money. And so what I do is I'm on the three month end of the three to six months emergency fund. I don't go to full six months because I believe my money can be working harder than that. And so what you can do is you can invest it into something profitable. You know, it could be the stock market. It doesn't have to be. It could be peer to peer lending, like a lending club. It doesn't have to be. It can be in real estate. Maybe you, you really want to buy a property um, and maybe you can use your tax refund as a down payment on a property, you know, an investment property, something that's going to produce you income for the rest of your life. And so that's one way. I mean, it can be so many different things. It can be in gold, it can be stocks, um, it can be ETFs, exchange traded funds, um, which is an index fund. Ultimately, it's basically a pool of stocks, a pool of bonds. So if you don't just want to buy just one stock that you think might be risky, you can buy a pool of stock. You can buy a hundred stocks at a very small, um, at a very low price. And if you want to do automated investing, you have apps like Acorns, Betterment. Um, you have just a bunch of different ones, Stash and things like that. There's just a bunch of different apps out there nowadays, mainly created for millennials, um, people who value automated investing. And so I actually have an Acorns account and I invest $5 a day. And so for the next, for the rest of my life, I will at least invest $5 a day into my investment account. And so that's, that's a personal commitment. That's something that I've done. And so if you want, you can actually have your tax refund directly go into this Acorns account. And what Acorns will do is it will invest your money for you. You, you just pick your, um, your investment horizon or your risk tolerance. For example, I'm more of, the, I'm more of an aggressive investor. I used to be a super unaggressive investor until I became more comfortable with the market. Um, and then, so I started off as conservative and then I went moderately aggressive and now I'm fully aggressive investor. And so I chose the, the aggressive um, investor and so what Acorns is going to do is it's going to find exchange traded funds or index funds that match my investment personality or investment or risk tolerance. And so I'm aggressive so I can lose money. I don't have kids. I don't have a wife. So I'm, I'm able, I'm willing and able to lose money. Although, of course, my aim is not to lose money. I just like, I like to be compensated um, for the risk that I'm taking for my money being invested. And so I don't mind losing money. Although I don't want to lose money, I just don't mind it. And somebody that's a bit more conservative, they mind losing money, but they still want some type of return on their money. And so let's say like an AT&T stock. To me, AT&T stock is a very conservative stock because I know for a fact that I'm going to be paying my 5% each and every year, 5 6% each and every year. That's something I don't even think about. I don't I don't go to bed thinking about AT&T stock because I know it's going to be there. And so if you want to be on a more conservative side, then what Acorns will do is it will find investments out there that match your personality. So it'll probably put you in governmental bonds um, or some, some sort of very safe, something that's been paying for a very long time and it's pretty safe. So if you want, you can open this Acorns account and you can open Betterment too. Um, Betterment is a little better just because it does what's known as tax harvest, um, tax loss harvesting. You know, that, that might be way over your head, but ultimately what it does is it, it sort of takes advantage of the tax code by selling things at a loss so that you get the tax write off up front. And then, but you're also it's, it's a very, very difficult strategy to um, explain, but just know that you're taking advantage of the tax code by doing that. It's more so for high income earners, um, people who need these losses, but at the same time, they're, they're benefiting from having the account. And another investment out there. So if you don't, let's say, let's say you don't want to save it. You don't want to spend it. 
you don't want to invest it because you think the market is risky. Um, although the market has gone up 10% so far this year, or at least NASDAQ stocks. What you can do is you can invest it in something else. Let's say you're investing in your education. Maybe you want to learn a new skill, a new trade, or something like that. Um, me personally, I'm reading a lot of books now, so I'm investing a lot heavily into my education. And so each and every day, I read at least an hour of a book. So that's, that's seven hours a week. That should ideally be one book a week. Or let's say you want to do a class or a seminar. You want to learn more about stocks. Well, then sign up for a seminar. There's a bunch of free ones out there. But if you really want the good bang for your buck, um, you might want to pay for a seminar from somebody that's hopefully they're, you know, they know what they're talking about. And so maybe it is a class, it is going back to school. Maybe there's a degree out there that you want to get or a certificate or something like that. That's a good investment in itself. You're, you're investing in your education. The rate of return on that investment might just, just might be more than any investment out there, whether it's stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate. Maybe an investment in your own self, your own education might pay off even better. So that's another thing to think about with your tax refund. And the last or the second to last option is paying off high interest um, debt, such as credit cards. Remember, credit cards can, that interest can be really, really heavy. And here's, um, here's a quick note on banks. This is something that I recently pointed out. But what banks do ultimately is they take some of your savings, they take your money that they pay you say 0%, 0, .00, 0 something percent, and then they turn around and give you a credit card for 17 to 25%. And so if, if you think about the logic of this, it's kind of crazy if you actually sit down and really think about what I just said. Um, but let's say you do have a credit card and it's, let's say, 24% interest rate, which nowadays that's, that's pretty common for a credit card. For some reason, um, somebody I talked to, they thought they were paying 2% interest on their credit card. And I was like, that's that's pretty insane. I don't know a credit card that's below 17% right now. And so let's say you do have a credit card. It's eating up interest. Compound interest is working against you now. Eating up your interest each and every month. Um, your money is just evaporating. So what you can do with the tax refund, you can actually knock out this high interest um, balance and ultimately save yourself on interest and watching your account um, basically stop your account from depleting. Because what this credit card is doing to you is it's depleting your wealth each and every single month. And a way to prevent that is to knock out that balance with something like a tax refund. And so that's something, I don't stay away from credit cards, believe me, I, I love credit cards. Um, I have plenty of them right now, but I've never paid interest on a credit card before because I understand the level of interest that comes with credit cards. I personally never pay off interest-free loans. Um, I, I would never give out a free lunch just to, let's say, a bank. That's To pay off an interest-free loan, something that's privileged to me, um, that, would be, that would be like me losing money because I know for a fact I can earn more than 0% in any market out there whether it's stocks, bonds, ETFs, Forex, um, mutual funds, real estate, uh, lending clubs, something like that. I know for a fact I can gain better than 0% on my money. Um, and I'm pretty disciplined as well. So you do have to be disciplined if you want to avoid paying, um, basically taking advantage of the strategy of the no money down or the 0% interest. But ultimately, that's, that's one way is to maximize that tax refund is to pay off high interest debt. Um, and then and my definition of high interest, by the way, is anything greater than 7%. Another thing that you can do with your tax refund is you can donate it. You know, you can, you can donate it to your favorite charity, maybe your favorite radio station, like WGHC. There you go. Maybe, may, maybe that's, that's something that you're into. You know, it's, it's, it's quote unquote extra money for you um, so maybe it might be more beneficial. Maybe this money might gain more utility by donating it and investing it into a charity or a nonprofit organization. So really to conclude is 
to use your tax refund wisely. Um, this is money that can make a huge, huge difference. I've seen some pretty significant tax refunds. I've even seen a tax refund of $25,000. And so that's something that can make a huge, significant impact. Um, and me personally, I would invest it all or I would save it or I would save a portion of it. So I would invest it or save all of it, ultimately. And you don't have to spend it. This money is disposable. It's fully disposable, but disposable income does not have to be disposed of. So that's that's really it for the presentation. Um, I know we have a few weeks left of tax season. I hope um, I hope I hope the tax season turns out to be great. I hope the end the end turns out to be right. And I thank you guys for tuning in to WGHC ninety eight point three FM. Your voice, your music, your station. I'll hand it back over to my producer to do what he does best. When I heard this song, I only thought of my lovely godly empresses, my goddesses. That is the African Nubian princess, Superwoman. Content Jeff Beru and uh, the, another segment, uh, bro. All right, uh, 98.3. We are exposing our professionals to you, Papa B. Wama Boma Body and I'm with the Huaquan Training, bro. Or say, donate your refund to your favorite radio station right oh, here. I know. Nothing more. Who's that? Nothing more. What do you call baby? I'm with you. Why a mistake? <coughs> Baby, da 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 da. And then you may see yam 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 And you remember, bro? I got so I was a man, Tim Ha. So you can say Easter, not just say a pimp on us, sir. Hey, boy. Now you can't pimp on us, sir. We are talking about Easter. Nana, someone. And you buy him a cosy ass onto us.